Assalamualaikum and greetings to Prof. Ahmad Abbas Kuti and my fellow cosmates. My name is Hani Salwani with the metric number of A183068. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to be granted this opportunity to present about a research that is very relevant to our community today with the title of Abundance and Characteristics of Microplastics in Commercial Marine Fish from Malaysia, published in year 2019. Now before we start, I would like to share with you a few articles. Now as we all know, plastics are very widely used globally. In 2016, the Convention of Biological Diversity reported that 75% of all marine debris is plastic and almost 800 marine species were affected by marine debris via entanglement or ingestion. Here on the screen, I'm showing you one of the studies conducted in 2014 by Kawan et al, which shows that microplastics were detected in organisms cultured for human consumption, such as muscle. Now, in Malaysia, the first report on the emergence of microplastic in Malaysia, marine waters, was documented in this study by Kali et al. As we all know, fish and other seafood such as molas and crustaceans are important sources of protein for people in Malaysia. However, Consumption of fish is the major route of exposure to microplastics in humans with top predator fish containing considerably elevated concentration of microplastics due to bioaccumulation and biomagnification. Presence of plastic debris in human food is a concern due to its ability to sort persistent organic pollutants which could expose organisms and consumers to synergistic impacts from contaminants. The relatively small size of micro and macro mesoplastics causes them to be more readily ingested by a broad range of marine species from planktonic invertebrates to large marine animals. Now this brings us to the objectives of this research which are to determine the abundance of plastic debris in marine fish species from Malaysian markets and to measure potential presence of hazardous compounds on anthropogenic particles. Now, let's look at the methods employed in this study. So, the methods could be divided into five parts, which are sample collection, followed by extraction, and then visual identification, Raymond spectroscopy, and FESCM EDX analysis and statistical analysis. Now, firstly, for sample collection, a total of 110 individual fish from 11 commercial fish species were randomly selected and the fish were dissected using scissors and forceps. As you can see here from the screen, these are the visual of each fish which can be found in Malaysian markets. Next is isolated particles from uh, viscera and gills of fish were visually identified using Motic SMZ stereo microscope. And then the isolated particles were characterized with Raymond spectroscopy and elemental analysis was assessed using energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy. And finally, statistical analysis was conducted using SPSS. Now let's look at the results and discuss them. For this part, I'll be discussing results for each objective. And as I mentioned earlier, the first objective is to determine the abundance of plastic debris in marine fish species from Malaysian markets. So for this, we'll be looking at the chemical composition, proportion and morphology of the extracted particles, number of extracted particles across different size classes, and also the percentage of frequency of occurrence of microplastics in fish sample. Okay, so firstly, chemical composition of extracted particles. As you can see from the chart, plastic polymer makes up the most of the pie chart and it is due to the hydrophobic nature of plastics and widespread distribution of persistent organic pollutants in aquatic ecosystems, plastic debris are commonly found with a mixture of contaminants. The next figure is proportion of plastic polymer. Now, out of 43 plastic polymers, the most frequent type of plastic polymer was polyethylene. Presumably, this could be due to high demand and production of polyethylene, which contributes to the uh, disposal of this plastic polymer into aquatic environments. So here are some of the images of each type of plastic. 
polymers such as polyethylene and polypropylene and polyethylene terephthalate. And next is the morphology of isolated plastic polymers. Fragments was the most dominant plastic type which makes up 67.4% of the whole morphology. Surface morphology of microplastic can change significantly through degradation in the environment such as through erosion, photooxidation and temperature. These factors may cause microplastic surface abrasion which leaves pores and cracks on the surface and allows inorganic and organic pollutants to absorb into the microplastic. Now let's look at the number of extracted plastic across different size classes. As you can see, class 149 to 500 micrometer has the highest number. However, the average size of plastic is 2612.83 micrometer. The smallest size was 215 micrometer found in three finger thread feet, while the largest was found in Kachama with the size of 3490 micrometer. And the last one for the first objective is the percentage of frequency of occurrence. Now, as suggested by the bar chart, frequency of occurrence vary among species. Previous study from Liboran et al. stated that different ingestion rates in species may be due to fish consumption behavior, prevalence of ocean plastics, and population density in different regions. From the figure, we can see that the highest frequency of occurrence of ingested plastics was found in African catfish with 60%. And this is because African catfish feeds on zooplankton which have been reported to ingest microplastics. Research shows that a variety of commercially important fish species are often contaminated with microplastics in their gastrointestinal tracts, gills, liver and muscles. The occurrence of plastic debris in gastrointestinal tracts of organisms could be due to trophic transfer of smaller species being prey for higher trophic organisms. Now, let's move on to the result for the second objective which is to measure potential presence of hazardous compounds on anthropogenic particles. For this objective, we'll be looking at the result of FESEM uh, microscopy as well as uh, the energy dispersive X-ray spectra. So these are the FESEM image of selected extracted plastic polymer as we discussed earlier, which are polyethylene, polypropylene and polyethylene terephthalate. Okay, and then next is the EDX spectra of selected extracted plastic polymer. So from the analysis, it has been revealed that all examined particles contain carbon, oxygen and calcium, and only a few polyethylene particles contain uh, sodium, magnesium, chlorine and potassium. However, no contaminants were detected in any of these particles. Now, as a conclusion, excised organs and gills of 9 of 11 commercial marine fish species contained plastic debris, suggesting a potential route of microplastic exposure to humans. However, fish viscera and gills are often discarded prior to human consumption. Hence, further investigation of plastic contamination of edible fish tissues is recommended to assess potential plastic pollution in human food. Now with that, we have finally come to the end of the presentation. Before we part ways, I would like to share a quote by Laila Gifti Akita, which is, Mankind has a divine duty to be stewardship of the natural resources. Therefore, let's be responsible consumers and preserve the nature in the best interest of society, future generations and other species. That is all from me. Thank you for listening. Take care and hope to see you soon. Bye.